Anthony Ruffalo, certified financial planner here. I'm visiting today, what's the name of your law firm? <laughs> oh, you're such an idiot. <laughs> this is all usable footage, by the way. All usable footage. Chris Cherry McCraw. So I'm here. <laughs> this is going to take forever. Anthony Ruffalo, certified financial planner here, visiting with Christian Cherry of Crisp Cherry and McCraw. He's an estate attorney. I've been working with Christian for, I don't know, seven, eight, nine, ten years or something. And we're visiting today, and I just wanted to go over, I want to ask him a couple of questions on some basic estate documents. So, Mr. Cherry, what are the four basic estate documents that you suggest people have? Well, I think most people should always have a will, a financial power of attorney, a medical power of attorney, and an advanced directive for natural death. That's also called a uh, declaration of a desire for natural death in South Carolina. In North Carolina, it's an advanced directive. Gotcha. Okay. And you, you primarily practice mostly in North Carolina, but also in, in South Carolina, right? Uh, yes. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I think everybody knows that they should have a will. Now, can you give me an example of, in North Carolina, because um, give me an example of what happens if you die intestate. Intestate is dying without a valid will. Um, with the example of, let's say you're married and you have two kids, you die and no will. What happens? No soup for you! Well, your probate property, which would be the property that is um, in your sole name without a beneficiary designation, and also your real estate, if it's in your sole name in that example, will be split between your spouse and your children. So that's not necessarily the intuitive thought would most people would think that all the property would go to their spouse, but it's not. It's going to be split between the children and the, uh, and the spouse. And I, I'd have another example, too, that I would give. Um, you're married and you don't have children. Um, you know, in that scenario under North Carolina law, if your parents are alive, your spouse is going to share your that probate property and that real estate that's in your sole name with with your parents. <laughs> Which again, you know, you're married for a long time, you don't have children, but you've devoted a life together. You know, financially, mm -hmm. that's not necessarily the result that you want to have happen. No, I, I don't think uh, many people would be happy with that result. So. Under that scenario, let's say you had just $100,000 in a bank account uh, just sitting in cash, so you're saying that would be subject to be split with parents. I'm losing it! Parents. Yeah, you're getting technical on me here, but uh, a, the first, uh, a certain amount would pass to the spouse initially off the top. Gotcha. And then the remainder would be split. Now, in that number that you gave with 100000 uh, some of it would definitely go to the parents. Gotcha. Okay. Well, we don't need to get into specifics, but in general, um, you know, I think most most spouses, the intent would be to pass. You know, if, if we lose one spouse, a hundred percent would go to the other spouse. I think that's typically the intent that I see in in my everyday practice, and that's not actually what would happen in reality if we lost somebody and they did not have a Correct, if they didn't have a valid will, that, that's the issue. All right, well, Christian, thanks for spending some time with us and, and uh, sharing some of your estate planning insights. Uh, hopefully we see you again.